And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Uh, welcome everyone. Welcome. You already know who we are and uh, what we're doing here because you saw the intro to the show. So why be redundant? And why waste my energy? Um, it is uh, creeping towards the end of May 2016 and uh, the um, as far as the news goes, uh, the, uh, the big and very important California primary is ahead of us, and uh, Bernie is uh, Bernie Sanders is attracting massive amounts of people at his rallies, his many rallies, uh, being that he doesn't have the budget to be plastered all over California television. He decided to do many rallies because there there are many it's a big state many cities many um, areas in California to cover so uh, but people are really showing up he's but of course you wouldn't know how many people are at his rallies because the uh, corporate horror mainstream media doesn't mention anything about what Bernie's doing except for the fact that he's still in the race that's all they say. No. They say he doesn't have enough delegates. Well, he, he doesn't have enough delegates because Hil uh, Hillary and the, and the hawk-nosed Jew lesbian, uh, uh, Deborah Wasserman, uh, Wasser, Deborah Wasser Conchitz, has rigged the election and he's be she's being handed the delegates on a silver platter, plus the oligarch, the top 1%, is behind Hillary Clinton. That's why. All right, but they still, still, Bernie Sanders, all in all, deserves much more face time than he's getting. All right? This is, an, uh, this is a totally unscripted, uncensored show. I just want to let you know that. Uh, you know, similar to our Facebook group, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth, which you can join. And our Facebook page is uh, Progressive Discussions. Now, named after the show. Um, oh, my monologue is, is about an, uh, an old word that has come back. Uh, it used to be popular back in the 60s, and, and you know, back in the day. And that word is establishment, the establishment. And today, uh, we use the word now, which has become popular, establishment politicians, establishment politics, and, um, and for good reason, because it's not the Republicans, the conservative Republican versus the more liberal or progressive Democrat any longer. It's the entire... Uh, two major party system is uh, they're all on the, on the take it's all corrupt they're all corporatists they're just two sides of the same coin right? so we're going to collectively call them the establishment politics now uh, before you you can uh, totally uh, grasp the words establishment politics you should really go to your Merriam-Webster dictionary or, or go to the Merriam-Webster online dictionary and you should learn your political definitions as an assignment to the show. It's important to know your definitions. 
look up uh, fascism, then look up capitalism, uh, look up uh, uh, liberalism, liberals, look up uh, socialism. Um, <clears throat> and uh, notice similarities as you read the definitions. There are certain similarities. Uh, you can look up communism if you want. Um, look up uh, oligarch. You're going to notice some similarities between uh, oligarch, fascism, capitalism. There are some similarities there. Some of the definitions might even be identical to you, but at least you'll learn them. All right, that's the foundation, is to know your political definitions. Um, socialism, communism, in reality, is not the demonized words that your uh, lying, flag-waving conservative politicians have told you. Uh, they they have a, a different meaning. Uh, what, what the what the right wingers are telling you is about uh, totalitarianism, like a military dictatorship, which is not socialism. It's not Karl Marx. Okay. Uh, and uh, what the Bernie Sanders campaign is uh, patterned after is the most ideal, successful system which is the democratic socialism that they have in Northern Europe. It's been working for decades. And uh, it hasn't really hurt business at all. I, actually, businesses are flourishing in the Scandinavian countries, even though they pay their fair share in taxes. They pay a high tax rate. And uh, it's only fair, the more money you make, the more money you pay. So that takes the burden off the middle class, which it is, high taxes on the middle class is a burden. And uh, not on the rich though, because they're still rich, you know, uh, no matter what. Um, now, establishment politicians, I would say this includes any politician that takes uh, funding, campaign contributions from the top 1% of the uh, income status from the wealthy. If you take massive amounts of money from these large organizations, corporations, it's not for free. You owe them favors if you get elected. Um, Bernie Sanders, of course, he gets his funding from the little guy mainstream America. It's very small donations. Uh, so his job is to do right by mainstream America, the little guy who makes tiny donations. But the but Hillary Clinton on the other hand, she owes big favors to the fat cats because that's where she gets her money. And, and this includes all the Republicans and all of the other establishment Democrats Okay, forget about moderate blue dog. They are corporatist establishment Democrats. I like to call them Democrat, Democrats. That's my own little pet name. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. It's, it's really not rocket science to understand politics because you have to support and vote for the person who has your best interest. That is the important thing. If you are a poor person living in a um, in a, in a so-called red state, uh, Bible Belt. I don't know why they call them Bible Belt because they don't know the, they don't really know what's in the Bible. They they are primarily uh, they have evangelical cultists in those states. If you're a poor s slob, let's say you're living in a shack or whatever, and you might even be on social assistance, uh, and you're voting Republican, well, you're voting for someone who does not have your best interest at all. Actually, they don't care if you live or die. Well, they, they care if you live only when you vote for them. 
but uh, and uh, for other reasons. Well, of course they don't have your best interests. You have to support those that have your best interests. And if you're poor, low income or middle class, the person who has your best interests is the one who is the most progressive liberal. The most progressive is the one who has your best interests. Uh, Hillary is not that person. She's she's not. She she could say she's progressive, but she's not. So um, you just have to understand the people you're supporting. You have to understand your political definitions, and uh, it's really that simple. It's that simple. Uh, now, another thing about um, uh, establishment politics is that it's very dirty. They cheat. They're corrupt. They like to rig things in their favor, like what's happening with the Democratic primaries, with the voter fraud. And uh, as far as all this news I see every day on the internet about Hillary Clinton and her emails and all the dirt and how the FBI is on the case and all that, I think they already know what the uh, Clinton found uh, the Clinton dynasty has done both her and her husband they know they uh, uh, Hillary's uh, whatever servers have been hacked into uh, anonymous did did a lot of it I'm sure others have they, they know what Hillary's about but they're holding off but they tell you on the internet they're working on the case. They're they're close. They're close to nailing her. They're, I think they already have nailed her in reality. But they're holding back before the uh, convention. They want. They don't want to do anything. I don't even know if they're going to do anything after the convention, because she's she's the oligarch's best puppet. She's the best. Republican the Democratic Party ever had Hillary Clinton so that's basically it if you have any take on it feel free well they have said that the emails that were classified were done after in fact, they say after she was no longer Secretary of State. So if the FBI is investigating that, they should be over with it already. If, if it's proven that those emails were done after the fact, Correct. then what you're saying is everything was done on her own time. I'm saying she was no longer involved, per se. Because she did they not... They classified after she left office. Comprende? So when she was bouncing them back and forth, they weren't classified. Now, that's what they say. Right. That, we're talking about the emails. But the FBI has taken its good old time, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, like uh, like road work on a highway. They're milking it. They're they're taking their sweet ass time. Yeah. And uh, the emails is just the tip, tip of the iceberg with um, the Clinton dynasty, uh, of, as far as wrongdoing is concerned. Uh, oh, they're they're involved in other things, without a doubt. Uh, they just have a hands-off policy. You don't get 111 million dollars a year for nothing. They they have a hand to go, the the uh, the. Uh, What's that uh, scripture saying? He who makes haste to get rich shall not be innocent. No. As the nail sticks Stick it between the two the stones. Stone. So does sin stick to buying and selling. That's 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 a demonization of capitalism. Buying and buying and selling is capitalism. Well, it could involve uh, also making uh, 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 speeches to Wall Street for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. A bribe is is buying you know. something. You're buying favors. That's you're good. you're you're bribing somebody. You're greasing their palm. You you were you're purchasing them for a reason. 
uh, you know, people have these stupid petitions flying around the internet about getting Barack Obama to investigate the voter fraud. You can't, you can't convince one corporatist establishment Democrat to bring down another. I mean, uh, it's, it's not going to happen. Now, it's, now it's, it's, I was with Billy Morrow, our voiceover artist Wednesday, uh, not Wednesday, uh, uh, Thursday, I'm sorry, Thursday. And he's talking uh, with his, these two older uh, retired people, and they're talking about politics because they got CNN playing on the uh, on the big screen where he was having coffee, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going on and on about you know why uh, he doesn't like Donald. They were talking. They were talking about Donald Trump just blurting out anything he feels like blurting out, anything he feels like saying. They're saying he, he does not sound presidential, which is obvious. Now, now. Bill Morrow goes on and on saying, uh, he says something about, uh, I bring up education and health care as a right. It should be a right. It is a right in Northern Europe. He says, uh, oh, there's nothing wrong with uh, the educational system and universities being a business. That's the American way. There's a, business is good. That's, it's good. I says, oh, really? Af after these students get their... Uh, uh, Acquire the the debt of their of their massive uh, student loans. How do you expect them to pay back the student loan? Oh, there's opportunity in this country. That's why it's America. Uh, there there have been many people that lived out of their car. They had to sleep in their car. They were penniless, and they and they uh, and they went from from that to to a success story to riches. They they. they they apply themselves. They work. They brought. They brought themselves out of that poverty by sleeping in the car. I says, Bill, <laughs> all you're talking about, you're talking about an America of the past. He he goes. He's going on and on about, uh, uh, you know, free enterprise system. It's the American way. I says, well, what does that mean? It's the American way. I says, you sound like the uh, the, the the intro to Superman. What Series about the that? Homestead Act? It's the American way. Does that make it good because you say it's the American way? What happened to the Homestead Act where 160 acres were given, given by the government uh, to people who would go there and uh, take care of it for five years? Yeah, Val it was given to them Vladimir Putin, by the government. Vladimir Putin's doing that right now with, uh, with in Russia. He, he's, yeah, so he, they didn't have to sleep in their covered wagons, did yeah. they? He's, he's encouraging organic farming by giving uh, land if you're willing to work it. He's, he'll, well, Hugo Chavez tried that too, and they certainly got rid of him, didn't they? Well, he died of prostate cancer, I think. Well, we don't know that. We well, don't know that the CIA doesn't... Get, I mean, they know how to give you a heart attack. Well... With Ven a bubble in your vein or whatever in Ven your artery. Venezuela is in is in deep shit right now. Their people are literally starving. I don't know why, because Venezuelan is, is oil rich. Yeah. Well we know why, because the oligarchs are in, in power. That's why. So they're doing the same thing that they do in neighboring Colombia. The the their their top one percent. Or top twenty percent are, are are controlling everything and 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 confiscating everything and stealing everything, and the people have nothing. And making the greed the Greeks pay for it, making the poor people of greed pay for it. Now, um, yeah. So the, this whole thing about uh, free enterprise system, the American way, the American way, it's business. Business is good. Business, yeah, business is good. You know what happens when uh, you you keep education as a business? You eventually, these people you're admiring want to get rid of public schools. So then, what what, what will happen? What will happen is only the rich kids will get a good education, and the poor kids. Will That's how it once was in the, this country. 
until Jefferson and etc. And they made public schools. The, 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 the poor children will be dumbed down, which means the mainstream America will be dumbed down. Good, then they'll just remain cogs in the wheelie wheel of industry. And they'll be de and, they'll, they and they'll become so desperate that they will work for peanuts and then eventually slave labor. I says this is your wonderful American way, uh, you know. I, but he didn't. He didn't let me. He didn't really listen to me. He just was listening to himself. He wasn't focusing on what I was saying. There are people. The older gentleman listened to me and agreed with me. Billy just kept on rah, 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 about because the American way. Because he has way. an agenda, and he is not. He is not capable of correction. No, if you can't. Boat, if a boat is going into a storm, you make a correction in your trajectory. There are people who have, like the people down south, the religious nuts, and stuff, they have their ideas of what is right and wrong, and they are not susceptible to teaching. Their ideas of what's right. right. But they are not susceptible to teaching. No, they, they, they are tuning you out. That's correct. They tune you, even if you're showing them the verses in the Bible, they're not paying attention they to you. They are not amenable to no, facts. No. It's like the movie The Perfect Storm with, um, um, with George Clooney. He was told not to take his fishing boat that far out because uh, it's dangerous and there's a storm out in the, in the Atlantic. But, but he, risked, he risked the boat to... to to uh, acquire the mother load catch of swordfish. So he took the boat out and he encountered, he, he loaded up the boat with swordfish. He got his record catch and lo and behold, the storm hit and capsized the boat and they all died. He lost the swordfish and their lives and the boat. So, you know, I mean, the uh, people are headed for the storm, uh, figuratively. And, uh, and you tell them, and you try to tell them the truth, and you say, listen to the scientists about gl uh, climate change. Uh, uh, they don't want to listen to the scientists. And, uh, you know, and they're headed for the storm. And that's what's going on. Um, but this whole idea of, the, of business, free enterprise, the American way. The American way, the American, oh, and he mentioned experiencing the American dreams part of the American way. Right? Yeah, how many people really really reach that and experience this so-called American dream? Not many. Very tiny percentage of the population. Very tiny percentage. These are, these are uh, accolades and uh, whatevers to get you to work for somebody else. So a, that you may them rich be a sucker, instead yeah. of yourself. To be a victim. Well, you know... We are he, supposed, this is supposed to be a country of entrepreneurs. Yeah. Well, his father, who was a big shot with IBM, he used to demonize uh, unions all the time. Of to course. Billy. So Billy feels unions are no good. Now, if unions are no good, if it wasn't for unions, we would not have today the labor laws and protection laws that American workers appreciate now. This is from unions. Unions pushed for these, for this protection. They for these died for labor them. laws, and they died for them. They didn't push for them. They died. Just like women fought hard for the right to vote, and and the civil the civil rights movement in the early 1960s, people have fought and died for that. But the the right wing wants to turn back the clock and do away with all that blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. Speaking well, of unions, Verizon capitulated. Yeah, I heard. And the after six weeks, the union won. I don't know what the hell they won, but well, anyway, they won. That deserves a salute with my lucky shillelagh. I, I congratulate the, uh, I, I, I do not, I know it's a specific union. I think it's CWA, I'm it's, not sure. Yeah, it's not just the Verizon technicians that belong to it. There, it's collectively that has to do with people that do the work like the Verizon technicians do. But it's, it's a nationwide 
union yeah. and um, they belong to it and I congratulate the union that the Verizon technicians belong to on their victory of you. actually uh, winning and not doing a 50% a compromise with the uh, evil greedy Verizon company so I do congratulate um, the union of the Verizon technicians so now I can get my, fi my files installed <laughs> But I really do congratulate them, and um, and by the way, it's only recently that we had to pay for education. It was free, okay? Unless, of course, you wanted to go to one of the biggies, like Harvard, Ivy League, or 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 Princeton, or Yale, Princeton, Yale, uh, Harvard, you know, uh, Notre Dame. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you want to go to an Ivy League school, yeah, that, that will be a bucks. private school. If you, if you, all you muckety mucks, you, all you kids, born with a silver spoon in your mouth, uh, you, you have that choice. You know, by all means, if you want to pay for it and you can afford it, go. But in general, education and healthcare should be rights. Uh, private privatization never worked. I don't care what Bill says about everything should be a business. Uh, because if everything's a business, the poor, low Suffer. income, and the middle class would get shit on a stick. They would literally get that, and um, and only the uh, the uh, the hoity-toity uh, little Lord Fauntleroy's, you know, you know, like Bill was an IBM brat, and he proudly calls himself that. Uh, you know, only they would uh, uh, achieve the American dream. Um, very tiny percentage of people have done that. Now, Elizabeth Warren had made a statement and it was put on a banner and I saved it. Elizabeth Warren pretty much answered Billy Morrow by saying that no one in the United States That's correct. that has achieved success it has, alone. has done it alone. Correct. Everyone, even the self-employed and even the corporations and big companies, uh, medium-sized companies, small companies, everybody has built their business uh, with publicly funded uh, services and, and things we take for granted today. Yeah. The roads in which they transport their products on mm. are, are were publicly built mm. so on and so forth the uh, mm. uh, 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 having a safe having safety in your factory is part of a publicly funded oh but they want to do away with that don't right. they but there are but there are there's a lot of very important things that are that are publicly funded by taxpayers' money that everyone benefits from, mm -hmm. even self-employed people with companies. Mm -hmm. So nobody totally does it on their own. That's correct. Pocahontas was right, wasn't she? Yes. No, she was right. You know, I mean, and and it goes into detail. It was a long banner. I thought it was well worth saving, so I, I uh, uploaded it. I shared it, it also. I uploaded it to, uh, yeah, the one with the blue background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, nobody is 100% pull yourself up by the bootstrap self-made. That is correct. So, William, a William Hamilton Morrow III, you are wrong. You live in a delusion, sir. Yes, he lives in a delusion. Thank you. He lives in a delusion. He lives in a delusion of whatever... His father told him, mm -hmm. not realizing that his father had, because of his job, a selfish agenda. He was what you would call a a dedicated company man. For put in his thirty years, but guess what? You can't do that today, even. Well, they get rid of you. That's correct. They got. They that got. Is uh, Iron Man Vinny Blake was uh, was. Uh, let go before he got his pension after 14 <laughs> years at uh, working for Kierfart Navigations. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. 
get rid of you before that pension is due. You know, but oh, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Shame on the establishment politicians that have either sold, most likely sold, some may say given away, but I say sold the sky, the clouds in the sky, and possibly the, the, the very sky itself when we look up. And the reason why I say this is because they are now, in some states, they are now selling permits for you to be able to collect rainwater on your own property. So that means if you have to buy, if you have to buy a permit to put a barrel with one of your gutter uh, from the roof, one of your to the uh, rainwater barrel, and you have to pay for this to collect rain from the clouds in the sky, then that must mean that they have sold the sky to corporations. They have privatized the, the sky. sky. Yeah. Forget about pie in the sky. This Poor is Chicken just, Little. This is just rain in the sky. Poor Chicken Little. There should be the Chicken Little Law uh, uh, protesting this. We should call it the Chicken Little Law. I think we will. Chicken Little. I coined the Chicken Little Law, the Chicken Little protest that, you know, first Monsanto tried to patent Mother Nature, and now... Yeah, they're doing a damn good job. And at. now your wonderful uh, capitalist system, Billy Morrow, has sold out the very sky that's above you and the clouds now belong to uh, the private sector because you have to buy a permit to collect rainwater so shame on you uh, establishment politicians that have sold out the very sky and clouds that are surrounding our mother earth <laughs> Uh, the, uh, it's not funny. It's really serious. Well, of course, it's it's all serious. I mean, I'm just make making it easier for you to digest by adding a little humor. But you know, well, I think it was also, Michigan uh, that I, the article. People do not grasp the fact that capitalism only works in the West. Now, why that is is because. As I continuously inform people, capitalism works for those who have capital. You have to have something to benefit from capitalism. In the developing countries, they don't even have their houses or their land. They have favalos and all kinds of shanty towns and stuff like this. So they have nothing. Hey, there are they have nothing there that they can change into capital. There are people in in Hong Kong that live in still live in those what do you call them sandpans? Those 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 boats. Boats. Those little boats. They live on the river. But that is what people do not understand. Okay. Let's use capitalism is for the few. Yeah. Let's let's take the uh, the hotel bell. company makes the hotel bell. Now getting back to the Bible verse about the nail sticketh between the two stones, and that, which is means that sin sticks to buying and selling. You're a company, you make these hotel bells. In capitalism, you're going to constantly every day think of ways to make this hotel bell, to manufacture them cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. You Maybe. Might, you might move your your manufacturing to a, uh, a poor southern state and then eventually you might outsource them, let's say, to China or let's say to Bangladesh. So now people are, are making, getting paid peanuts to manufacture your bell. Yeah, but the price may not go down. No, no, the no. The profit margin will go up. Those things are done most times for the profit margin, right. not for the price to go oh, down no, the, of the price, item. The price won't go down. So when they bring well, the bell, you make it cheaper and cheaper. So when they bring the bells off the cargo ship at the ports, under conservative, a conservative-run Washington, like the Republican Congress, there won't be 
appropriate tariffs uh, being slapped on the company that makes the hotel bells, all right, you know, to make up for all the American jobs that were lost. They won't get tariffed. They'll, they'll just come moseying on in the port, Ooh. unloaded, and sold at a premium price. Meanwhile, maybe child labor is making these bells. Mm -hmm. So there is the sin sticking to buying and selling. Seven lucky bells for the show. Now this is a high quality bell, unlike the other bell that I had from the damn Dollar Tree. This is a good bell. I could I could have never rang it up in the air if I had the other bell. No matter where it is. Look, even sideways. Let me see if it works upside down. No. Ah! <laughs> it doesn't work upside down. Oh god. God help us all. Everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. There's the conch, soaking at conch energy from the briny deep, from the lair of King Neptune. Anyway, uh, like I said at the beginning, as a foundation, your homework should be to read slowly the political definition so you understand what the differences are between capitalism, socialism, uh, liberals, liberalism, um, uh, uh, Pluto I mean oligarchy, um, cap uh, oligarchy, um, uh, uh, fascism. You know, read all these definitions, and this way you can better understand what we're talking about. You know, instead of. Uh, listening to a bunch of stupid rednecks just blurt out all these names at, at Obama. I mean, he's, Obama's not innocent of all, of all the, the names he gets called, but he's definitely, he's definitely, without a doubt, the victim of racism. And that's where the obstructionism comes from. But, but he's still an establishment politician. And... Uh, that's why we don't see any investigation of the voter fraud. I know Bernie Sanders has a lawyer. I know he has a great team. But nobody is, it's like it's falling on deaf ears. I don't see justice being served. Because all the states have their own gal dang rules. You know? You know, where, you know some states have, have gotten smartened up, like Maine, and did away with the superdelegates. But uh, it's a well, what is it? One of the one of the Midwest uh, the Midwest the states holds a caucus and a primary, but the primary doesn't count. That doesn't make sense. Bernie won the caucus. Hillary won the primary. Which doesn't make so sense. So Bernie got the delegates, but no, only no. like two hundred and sixty thousand people oh. voted in the caucus while 1.4 million voted in the primary. Now you either hold the primary yeah. and have a democracy and allow your people in the state to make their choice or you know have a caucus and less people show up to, to vote at the caucus. Yeah, I don't, think, right. I, I, don't, I don't think it's right to force people to register as being part of the one of the two major parties. Well that either. That's not fair either. There should be one person or w one vote. Um, you know, now all the states that Bernie Sanders won, obviously, uh, voter fraud was not the deciding factor. So for some reason in those states, the, it was an honest election because if it was dishonest, the Hillary would have won every one of them. You know, sure. but other states, uh, there's definitely shenanigans uh, went on in states like uh, Nevada, Arizona, uh, New York, because the only York, the York. only part of New York that went for supposedly went for Hillary was the city, and and the city wasn't all they weren't all Hillary fans. I mean, Brooklyn was unanimously for uh, for Bernie. Uh, 
you know, and all the other counties in New York State were for Bernie. You know, anything north of Westchester County was for Bernie Sanders. But even with all of that, even with all of that, it's the goddamn superdelegates that are a big piece of crap. It's like the Electoral College. You're, you're running for president. It's November. And you got this stinking Electoral College that is overriding the popular vote. Yeah. Now, you would think if you get a lot more votes than your opponent in the whole country, that sounds like a fair election to me. You won. Mm. It's like a, 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 a Super Bowl or World Series. Of, uh, you know what I mean? Like, you well, get more points than your opponent. The establishment, to use your word, likes to keep control. And that's what the superdelegates are, that's what the electoral college is, that's what all of that shit is. What do you think the Supreme Court coming down and making George W. Bush the President of the United States was? Yeah, he was selected. Selected. Correct. He was selected. And, uh, well, this means that that uh, all this uh, r ridiculous, uh, idiotic, bipartisanship compromising does not work because the people end up losing and uh, yeah, well, you know and and people the, the mainstream ah, they're just gonna have to get tough I mean uh, uh, Bernie Sanders says the Democratic Convention might get real messy well he's right <laughs> he's right I mean uh, 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 watch what happens when thousands and thousands and thousands of people get that pissed off why yeah, well, they can get pissed off and pop a doom, ba dee ba dee ba dee But guess what? They keep voting for Mitch McConnell's. I'm not talking okay? about. I'm not talking That's about the that. Problem. My friend, I'm not talking about that kind of pissed off. I'm talking about pissed off where people get violent. I realize that at the convention, but that doesn't stop people from voting for Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. Well, they're, pro they're probably people like Billy Morrow. You can't teach them anything. Exactly. <laughs> incorrigible. Even God like, has given up on the incorrigible. You know what it reminds me of? A corporation. You have these company people that go by the book. You, you ever listen to, especially like these women, they talk like real, like they're uh, OD'd on caffeine. Like, oh, the corporation, the corporation. Like robots, the corporation. Company, company policy, company policy. You know, it's like you don't have a mind of your own. You're not a, a an independent, critical, free thinker. Well, they're not. You're an open mind. Sounds uh, like Ann Coulter. And what's this bullshit? What's this bullshit? Uh, you know, and speaking of the office, something as simple as a man asking out a woman out on a date and she can get him fired and say, he's bothering me, and, and the company fires him. That is part of ultra-liberalism, feminist crap. That whole bullshit political, uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, for, uh, um, the, the whole feminist thing, you know, where, the, where the, you know, women could say, you know, what did they used to do in the old days? Masher, masher. The women would scream out, masher. Oh, you, oh, we gave you a compliment. Sexual harassment. You complimented my outfit. Sexual harassment. You know. I mean, look, people play the race card to their advantage. People like Hillary Clinton play the gender card to her advantage. You know, you gotta, you gotta learn how to say no to people and organizations when it's appropriate to say no to them. You gotta call it straight down the middle, like a uh, good football it's appropriate for a woman to say no to a man who wants to go out with her too. Yes. If you don't want to go out with him. Yeah, but don't get him fired for that. Well, you know what I mean. Maybe he was too much of a pest. You see, he, this guy, you, there you, are two you, sides. you like, you like that, uh, that special treatment uh, there towards are certain two groups. There sides to every issue. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. You got to prove it. Just like That's cases right. of rape have to be proven, my friend. Well, they haven't been all these years. Like what happened, to Mike, like what happened to brother Mike Tyson, a long time ago. That wasn't proven rape. There was too much evidence on the contrary. Well, 
Well, then somebody made a mistake. Ah, uh, well, the, 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 you Was got Was he it. charged? He had to go to prison. Okay, well, the, 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 the district attorney. Her, had, her, a, had, a, had a, you know, a bad case and it turned out know, good. She shows up at his hotel room in the wee hours of the morning and she uh, they found her tampon conveniently placed in a wastebasket uh -huh. on the other side of the, uh, far away from the, the bed, you know, and uh, so there, it sounded like there was consensual sex going on there. Mike Tyson was not too bright a fellow. You know, okay. you know what? They want equality. It's got to be equality across the board, and it, whether it be women or minorities, you want equality. It's got to be fair across the board. No special treatment for any particular group. Think like old man Spock. Huh? The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. You see this dude, old man Spock, Leonard Nimoy. You got to think that way. You know what I mean? But if you want special treatment, you know what? People in general are selfish. They want, 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 want. If, you know, people from um, Yugoslavia think that all Yugoslavians are the best. Greek people think all Greeks are the best. Even Italians off the boat. Everybody thinks the world revolves around their people or their race or their gender. So the feminists, the carpet munchers, they want Hillary. They want that woman in the White House because they have the selfish agenda. Me, me, me. They're not all inclusive, is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's sink our teeth if there's any time. No time. Well, we're very long-winded today. Uh, all right, we're going to break for lunch, and then we'll sink our teeth into these re readings so when we get back. And we'll turn you over to William Hamilton Morrow III for promo. As well as how to defeat a conservative God Project Bible verses. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow, for doing promo. We're back. And let us now sink our teeth into these readings. This is Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna, and I'm with my co-host and mentor, 
the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisen. Mm -hmm. The very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. Scientists have found further evidence supporting the theory that some of the building blocks for life may have come to Earth from outer space. Using instruments aboard the European space probe Rosetta, researchers detected glycine and phosphorus in the dusty halo around a comet. Glycine is an amino acid, one of the molecules needed to make protein while phosphorus is essential for DNA and cells. Their presence in the com... Comet, they misspelled it. In the comet, enveloping, excuse me, in the coma, enveloping the comet, 67P... Yeah, put me in a coma. Sure, you move Jerry C. Manenko. Oh my God, this must be... Russian comet named, supports the idea that comets delivered key molecules for prebiotic chemistry throughout the solar system, and in particular to the early Earth, according to a study published online on Friday by the journal Science Advances. Scientists say adding a high concentration of those molecules to a body of water could have produced the primordial soup that gave birth to life on our planet more than four billion years ago. Primordial soup. I prefer bean soup if you don't mind. Um, I had... Um the German style green pea soup with brown rice the other day. I loved it. It was, had leeks in it. I mean, not the ball. There was no hole in the ball. You know, it was leeks, the vegetable. The beauty of it is that the material in the comet was formed before the sun and planets formed. Wow. In the cold environment of the star-forming region known as the molecular cloud. That means what has happened a long time ago in the cloud from which our solar system emerged could happen in all clouds. Then, you just need another planetary system forming with a planet at the right position and you could have another go at life. It may not be successful, but as there are billions of stars and as we now know billions of planets, chances are good. I'm just eating um, walnuts, almonds, and dried dates. You're wondering what I'm chewing, huh? A new federal study of the potential dangers of cell phone radiation conducted on rats found a slight increase in brain tumors in males and raise the long dormant concerns about the safety of spending so much time with cell phones glued to your ears. Very true. I was reading that article uh, last night. They have, they have concluded the evidence is, is in. But the study had enough strange findings that it has caused other federal scientists to highlight flaws in the research. And experts said these findings and those from other studies continue to suggest the potential risk 
from cell phone radiation is very small. The National Inters Institutes of Health study bombarded rats with cell phone radiation from the womb through the first two years of life for nine hours a day. It found tumors in two to three percent of the male rats, wow. which this study authors called low. Yeah, but if you have a, if you have a genetic predis predisposition to cancer in your family, you don't want to take that chance. But females were not affected at all. And strangely, the rats not exposed to cell phone radiation died much faster. At double the rate of those that were. Huh. The results were preliminary and only part of what will ultimately be released. They were made public before they were officially published and Despite strong criticism from other NIH scientists, because the results were similar to other studies, that hint at a potential problem, said study author John Boucher. The study is part of a 17-year, excuse me, a 7-year, $25 million effort conducted by the National toxicology program at the request of the Food and Drug Administration. No. Lo and behold! I really trust their opinion. It looked at the specific type of radiation that cell phones transmit called non-ionizing radio frequency. This is the first study to show that non-ionizing radiation causes cancer. The Cancer Society, in a statement, praised the study for evidence that cell phone signals could potentially impact human health, but notes that it doesn't quite address real risk to people. If cell phones cause cancer, they don't cause a lot of cancer. It's not as carcinogenic as beef. <laughs> they, they, they cause it, they don't cause a lot of it. You know, um, it's better all the way around to use the, the wire, the earplug. Really, in, in all ways, not just uh, cancer risk, if you want to take that risk or not. Uh, it's 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 better, you know. It saves you money on very expensive police tickets when you're driving, and it makes you more aware of your environment. To be hands-free, and you know, just have that wire, and it's a big deal. People should be far more concerned about distraction caused by the cell phone, which he said causes more death. While the study found what Boucher called a likely cause of cancer in rats, he cautioned that <coughs> he cautioned that how that applies to humans is not currently completely worked out. This may have relevance. It may not have relevance. Since 1986, U.S. brain cancer deaths have not increased or decreased. That suggests that whatever effect cell phones may have, it is so small as to be undetectable amid, amid regular cases of brain cancer. Also, Brawley and others point out that cell phone technology has improved so much in recent years to emit less radiation than medical studies simulate. 
Boucher said the levels the rats were subjected to would be considered heavy. The study also found a slight increase in a very rare type of heart tumors. Oh, gee. In the male rats exposed to cell phone radiation, the same NIH scientists looked at mice. But those results won't be ready until next year. Oh, it's a good article. Thank you very much. Something we already were aware of, but you know this explains it in much more fine detail. Columnist E. J. Dion, for the record, our newspaper here. writes that Bernie Sanders showing is a mark of the anger and frustration felt by so many Americans over the abuses of capitalism that led to the crash of 2008. Dion is half right. Capitalism did not cause the financial meltdown in 2008. Oh no. Crony capitalism did. Well, don't don't be too sure about uh, old-fashioned, plain old-fashioned capitalism being uh, 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 totally innocent. Crony capitalism caused the bust that caused so much pain and suffering and anger throughout America. The Federal Reserve caused the crash by keeping rates low after the dot-com bust, igniting a housing market bubble. This is the incontrovertible fact that Sanders, or for that matter Hillary Clinton, has failed to acknowledge during the primary campaign. Bernie Sanders sure tore Alan Greenspan, a new asshole, in that video that's on YouTube. If the Democratic Socialist Senator from Vermont had done a little homework or listened to his former congressional colleague Ron Paul, who ran for president in 2008 and 2012, he would understand that the Federal Reserve was created in 1913 during the progressive era at the behest of the bankers to prop up the flawed banking system. By the way, it has nothing to do with the federal government. What? It has nothing to do with the federal government. It is a private organization. Federal Reserve. That is correct. That makes it even more evil. That w yes, and the beginning was evil, where they met at Jekyll Island. Uh, the big bankers, J.P. Morgan uh, representatives, and uh, Wells Fargo, and etc., etc., and the senator who introduced it into the Senate, Mr. Aldrich. Now, the what was Alan Greenspan's role? He was the head of the Federal Reserve uh -oh. for a time, for, for a like maybe 17, 18 years. Wow. Since Reagan. Really? Since yeah. and, and that's why Bernie Sanders was so angry when, when he was yelling at him and, and Alan Greenspan had yelling. that smirk on his face. Because Alan Are Greenspan you done yet? He lives says. in a bubble. He lives in a rich person's bubble. Okay? And that's all he knows. He doesn't know about the poor and the middle class and how certain things hurt them and etc. Well they're like so they're so they're like sociopaths. They live in a bubble. They don't feel any remorse because that's true. it's not their problem. That's correct. And if it's not their problem they don't care and uh Well like, everybody should get out there and 
and then and, and become their own entrepreneur and, uh, you know, uh, get the American dream. American dream. Uh, uh, oh, there's been many. I'm just imitating Bill Morrow. There's been many people who slept out of their cars. They lived in their cars and they. Well, James T. Kirk lived in his uh, 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 trailer. Oh, like Freddie Prince and Chico yeah, and the Man. Yeah. Chico and the Man, yeah. But you know, you have to have a place to park that thing. Car, too. But, but, but you have to get. When you get your your first breaks in life, you you don't conjure up your your breaks. They're 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 provided for you. They're offered you. The breaks are offered and given to you. You don't like jump up and down and yell and scream on the top of your your van and demand them. You know what I mean? They're not. Uh, I mean, the concept of these people living in cars being totally self-made uh, is nonsense. The anybody who says they're self-made again will go back to Pocahontas or whatever. But the point of it is, uh, even Larry Flint, uh, he'll go around and say that uh, Hustler magazine he got off the and, and uh, Hugh Hefner too it got off the got off the ground. It was five hundred dollars. Well, my friend, I'd like to see you do that today. Okay? When nobody knows you from Adam, nobody knows your name. Why? Just do it again. Even uh, Herbert W. Armstrong, uh, he, he, his uh, first uh, uh, magazine or whatever you want to call it was mimeographed and given away for free. Really? You don't, uh, you don't make a magazine and then ask uh, for five hundred dollars and ask somebody to pay for it. Yeah, but the the plain truth. I I believe it was called something else at the time. Okay. But it was mimeographed. For crying out loud and given away. Nobody's going to pay you for something brand new uh, uh, that, uh, that that don't don't cost anything to make. See, once you once you establish yourself, you may and you make a name for yourself. Now you're part. Now you're you're in the spotlight. You are a. You could be a partial celebrity or fifty percent celebrity or a full celebrity. But once your popularity begins, then it becomes easy. Then <clears throat> then you could ask for. Uh, top dollar for a uh, subscription to your newsletters and magazines. Or when you die. Well, you, you see what Freddie Prince, uh, what Freddie, uh, what, what Prince's albums are going for now. Yeah, and he, and he, they were talking about his controversial song, uh, If if I Was Your Girlfriend, where he, <gasps> he sings the song in drag. And it was very controversial back then. And uh, I saw him play, I saw him playing with Tom Petty. Uh, he was playing guitar, and man, he was great. And at the end, at the end, when he was finished with his solos and all that, he throws the guitar up in the in, in, in the air and lets it fall down and break. <laughs> he's a and he freak. walked off stage. He's a freak. He's a freakazoid. I, he's I dead. Yeah, he's dead. I yeah. like I like um, Jimi Hendrix. Much, what much better? What the country needs. To restore a sound banking system and end the manipulation of interest rates is to end the Fed. And who's calling for that? Bernie! Ron That's Paul right. wanted to, uh, or Rand Paul, one of the Pauls, wanted to uh, audit the Fed because we don't know what the Fed is doing with our money. Our money. They make the money when the Constitution says that the United States of America makes its own money. But they make the money and we have to pay them for it. Isn't Ain't a, that something? Isn't it funny that all establishment politicians, they continue to perpetuate what is suspect of being unethical of course 
you know, and it's it, the and it takes status quo. And it takes a person outside of the box, like Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. to want to go after them and do yeah. something about it. Yeah, and then and then people uh, people will say like they're saying about the one uh, uh, Sanders. He never did nothing. He did that for how many years? He never did nothing. Because he was and, the and, only and one. Warren. She don't do nothing. She's just a big mouth, Pocahontas. Because she bucked heads with everybody else. Because yeah, but the point is, if you're a Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren, nobody's going to co-sign your bills. They're part of the establishment. They're not going to help you get something out there. So, so the the logic of these morons is that if you have a track record of getting things done, that means. You have a track record of compromising with the devil. With, with the devil. That's what Mr. Bill Clinton did so, with Mr. Newt Gingrich. So by screwing over the people who voted for you, by compromising with the enemy, with the adversary, with the with the right wing, you're getting things done, but you're fucking your own people. And you're fucking over the mainstream America and those that support it. And those are the things that Hillary will do. So if you if you want things to get done, that's exactly what would get done. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've been getting emails every day about helping the Bernie Sanders campaign here in New Jersey, and um, I try to look for a phone number. I will I will continue today. I want to let them know that I am voting for Bernie Sanders in the primary. But because of my personal situation, um, I am unable to. Uh, I am able to march the streets with you people, but I don't. As far as me canvassing and knocking on doors, I have personal issues that I cannot. I can't, I don't have the time to do it. You know, I have an elderly m mother that I have to look after. Um, and uh, besides, I will end up in fist fights with people that are rude to me, and that you know, when I, if I canvass, if I if I knock on the door, I know it's going to happen. You know, so you know, I don't have the tolerance for any shenanigans. So I feel that I am uh, best utilized right here every week promoting. Bernie Sanders campaign on our show progressive discussions uh, oh by the way the video that we did titled uh, why are we supporting Bernie Sanders is getting tons and tons of views rapidly which I'm happy um, it's, it was a great video it is a great video uh, so anyway when the next crash occurs Dion should not blame capitalism, but the zero and near zero interest policies of Ben Bernanke and Janet Yellen, Yellen. former and current heads of the Federal Reserve. Well, tell this, this jabroni to go to Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, the Pencil Neck Geek, and look up the definition of capitalism read it a couple times and then tell us that capitalism is fine and dandy unless you're wealthy it's not fine and dandy correct and everybody should know that I tell you all the time capitalism works for people who have the capital have already have, have you the you haves. want to start a business you know what you got to do you got to make a business plan you got to take it to the bank the bank has to give you the money unless you get venture capital from somebody well, else yeah with the, well, the bank you, or a credit union you have or to be one of the haves you have to have you have to have capital money and then you can invest it. that's why they call it cap and then you get a dividend you know what I mean? 
Yeah, that's what You're I call it. That's what I call it, capitalism. Well, shareholder is is after you're established and you're you're successful, then you have you you go to this, you your your company uh, goes uh, goes public, right? Stock market reaches yeah, the stock. Yeah, I'm talking about the shareholder, the person who buys the stock. Yeah, in a particular company, where he hopes to be making a dividend. Well, I mean, for his I, investment. I mean, Joe Blow from Idaho that's first starting out. It's not going to be going public on the stock exchange, but you know, eventually, if things go well, he will go public. But somebody has to give him the money. But you gotta have that big break coming from the outside. You have to be given the break of capital first. Yeah. And you have to make sure that the contract you have with the with the person or persons giving you the capital is fair where you have control over your company and not the people who give you the capital um, you know unlike well, the, point, but, but point, the point of it is the, the people, music industry who the screws people, pe people ain't going to give you the capital because you no. don't have no collateral because you ain't no you you're, don't have you're a nobody you get it they want collateral now is it this a, is this is it this a way that's the old uh I went for a job, they tell me I gotta have experience. How can I get experience and ain't got no job? What? What'd you say? You gotta be more, uh... uh you gotta uh, be faster, you, buddy boy. No, you have to pronounce your words in the King's English fashion, my friend. I went Not, for, Don't talk like Kramer when he got an overcare. I, <laughs> I went for a job. They told me I can't have the job, I need experience. Well, how can I get experience without a job. And how can you get a job without experience? They And they won't hire entry-level people fresh out of school. So I can't get the job to pay off my student loan. But I don't have experience. I don't have the job. I don't, I don't have this. I don't have that. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, you're, you're overqualified. You're underqualified. Oh, you're, you're too good. Oh, you're a threat to the guy uh, interviewing you. You're a threat to the, to the hiring supervisor. This guy's too good. Better not hire him. But, Listen, you can't win. It's like a catch-22. Bingo. They, but Bingo. It, the system is made where you can't win. Yeah. So the fat cats are always on top, and you are always at the bottom. The United States, the Chamber of Commerce, says it's time to fix America. No kidding. That's why they are sponsoring Infrastructure Week in Washington, D.C. Roads and bridges, public utilities and wastewater facilities all affect the health and safety of millions of Americans. No shit. Bernie Sanders is the only presidential candidate who is boldly addressing our neglected infrastructure. Sanders proposes dedicating 1.4 trillion dollars over the next 10 years to essentially repair the United States. Take it out of the military budget. According to the American Society of Engineers latest report, our dangerous and inadequate infrastructure is costing every American family about $3,400 per year. That's akin to a $3,400 tax on every household in the nation. The Garden States ranks eighth among the 50 states in deficient bridges. And our Transportation Trust Fund is nearly broke. Tax the rich, tax the rich. We need to move forward now on the tunnel project and to repair our water pipelines, crumbling roads and bridges, an outdated electric grid. Sanders' proposal would help fund all of these projects. Some 14 million jobs could be created by this initiative. Good jobs! 
that could lift families in New Jersey and across America out of poverty. Out of poverty, brother. Out of poverty. And rev up our economy. Modernized public transportation systems would help us save time, energy, and money. High, sp high speed rail, high speed uh, rails, light rails, modern, would improve our environment. I think the light rail would be <coughs> even more important than going cross country in a, in a high speed monorail because the light rail will help alleviate traffic by having less people own cars. We had, we had light rail one time, it was called trolley. The trolleys. Trolleys. Yes. yes. Firestone and uh, like, Standard Oil, they right, got rid of it. Like Rice Cerrone, the San Francisco treat. The trolley cars, they used to, they used to have them in, uh, in New York and in Brooklyn Wilkes and Barry, all Pennsylvania. Yeah. They used to have them all over. Yeah. You know, and uh, they uh, attempted to bring it back as a prototype, uh, a modern light rail system, uh, but it some something stopped it. Yeah, it's called Standard Oil and uh, Firestone tires and, and oil. Oh yeah, you can't sell all that stuff with an electric trolley. Oh, they just love they one car. They just love people to continue <coughs> sitting in heavy bumper to bumper traffic. Oh, you should have seen it on Thursday with people getting out of New York, blowing that pollution into the atmosphere. Oh, you, you know, hey. people getting it. Wait, is this Memorial Day weekend? That's correct. You know, son of a gun, I'm glad you reminded me. This is our official 2016 Memorial Day weekend show. Gee, how could I forget? I'm not going to be one of those suckers that gets stuck in traffic. Memorial Day weekend, 4th of July weekend, and Labor Day weekend. I'm no fool. I, I, it happened to me once in my life, never again. I know I say that every year. So I'll be I'll be just fine with all the roads looking like ghost towns and all the stores having no lines at the registers. I'll be just fine. A new study. A new study. They light the way to migraine relief. I really feel bad for these people. It's horrible. Researchers at Beth Israel Deacon Ness Medical Center in Boston studied the relationship between light and migraine sufferers as almost 15% of people around the world get migraines. The herb fever few is supposed to be uh, really beneficial for migraine sufferers. And thiamine. B vitamin thiamine, yeah. And 80% of migraine sufferers also suffer from light sensitivity. Hmm. Also known as photophobia. So these are very nocturnal, vampire, vampirish people. Researchers exposed 69 study participants and migraine as sufferers to different hmm. colors of light. They found that blue light intensified the pain. Is it a neurological disorder? While a small spectrum of low intensity green light helped. And in some patients, lessened migraine pain by 20%. Researchers are looking into developing low-cost light bulbs that emit the helpful green light or sunglasses that block all lights except the helpful spectrum of green light for to relieve patient symptoms. Mm -hmm. The study was published in the journal Brain. Brain, for those that have one. <laughs> you must have a brain to and now subscribe to my book. All right, all right. A change of pace. Tomato pace. I am about to graduate from high school. 
Mm -hmm. I'm very happy with my college choice. Right. I am majoring in STEM, S-T-E-M. So I am looking forward to being part of the growing group of young females in the scientific world. However, I have concerns about the social changes in college. Social changes? I have always been a good girl. Who stayed a virgin. Oh, come on. Come on, that's so un unrealistic and... I stayed away from boys in high school to focus on academics. Stay away from boys. Maybe she didn't get, she didn't get, maybe she didn't, did not attract that many boys. As a result? Sounds like sour grapes. I have never had a boyfriend or even my first kiss. Well, that now you know she's a brilliant yet homely looking girl. I have heard countless stories about college hookups, relationships, etc. Well, and I am very nervous about this aspect of college. I know college can be a time to explore your sexuality, but I am conflicted about this. I am not completely against it. If you find the right person, but I always thought being sexually active at such a young age was ridiculous. Ridiculous? Yeah. yeah. Dick. Ridiculous. I know there are many risks, STDs, sexual assault, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But with the culture of my generation, sex is something that seems to be advocated by the media, peer pressure, and the overall college setting. Well, uh, the, uh, the, the um, promiscuity of sex like it was a, a recreational pastime can lead to much trouble. I am in blessed all ways, in all ways, yeah. to have amazing parents and I know they will worry about me in college. So I have told my mom I won't have sex until marriage. Well, that That would be a problem. Good luck trying to find a boyfriend that would um, do that nowadays. Uh, but I, you know, I admire her for being a good girl uh, this long. You know what I mean? I just hope uh, you know she'll probably graduate with very, very high academic scores, and maybe she'll gra also graduate still being a virgin. I don't think any guy's gonna like wait for this, but I do have my personal curiosities about sex. However, I now believe in premarital sex. That's her choice. Is this the wrong decision? Am I too young to have sex in college? Even if I find the right guy. <laughs> Too young to have sex in college? I know she's not attractive. No, I know it. <clears throat> I feel so conflicted with the pros and cons that I just can't make up my mind. Well, you can't. You can't rationalize and make logic of it. It's it's a, it's a hormonal urge. Surge, as Archie Bunker used to say. It's a surge. 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 You know. I, I am also worried about how I will be treated in college if I refuse to be sexually active with anyone. Do you have any advice? They will mock her out. Here's Amy Dickinson's answer. <laughs> Dickinson, yeah. Like the smart and thoughtful young woman you are, you are throwing all of your smarts toward a solution that doesn't even have a problem attached to it yet. A 
approach your sexual choices the way you might approach a technical question. One step at a time. Many people do go a little crazy in college, but a high percentage of college students do not. Alcohol use is a risk factor in terms of your sexual choices. If you choose to stay away from alcohol and also hang out with sober students, your sexual choices will be intentional and your risk of STDs, assault, and unintended pregnancy will decrease. She's right. <clears throat> she is right. Hang out with the right people. Stay away from parties where they go crazy and uh, fraternities that do stupid things and you'll be fine. There are many ways of learning about sex and being sexual outside of intercourse. Mm. Don't discuss your chastity pledge with your parents uh. until you have a reason to. You can also choose to never discuss this with them. Your body is your own, and you, not your parents, should be in charge of it. Yeah, tell that to some cultures. <laughs> you know, they have these ridiculous prearranged marriages. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, and, uh, but, but, yeah, no, she's, listen, you gotta respect her, her decision, it's her life, it's her body, uh, you know, um, but she's, uh, she's, she's putting problems, she's attaching problems and issues that don't exist yet. You know, like, she's just jumping way ahead. Uh, and, but the main thing is, if that's her choice, she needs to just stay clear of the wrong environment. If she goes to parties where people get so drunk they vomit. Yeah. Then uh, who the there hell will, wants to kiss a guy who vomited? Then yeah. there will be girls who are exploited when they're drunk. There there will be drug abuse. There will be crazy stunts, you know, initiations for stupid fraternities, um, peer pressure, and uh, date rape, and um, mm -hmm. all this stuff. If you, ha if you go to social events where there are uh, nice, smart, normal kids like, like yourself, the kids that don't need to get drunk until they're sick, yeah. um, you know, you could drink socially. Then you'll be fine. Just hang out with the right people. Same thing with outside of college. Same thing with older people. Like, you know, in my case, I don't go to social uh, events where the people are not my cup of tea. The you know, like people that are heavily into partying and everything. I don't, I don't hang around them. I know people like that, and if you're not like them, they stop calling you. You know, you know they like to be birds of a feather flock together. Speaking of birds. Oh, you have a bird reading? Last one, I guess. Oh, it's about birds. How about that? The salt marsh sparrow <laughs> is disappearing from its home on the east coast. I, I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> and could be headed for extinction wow. in as little as 50 years. The sparrows, which weigh about half an ounce, Wow. live in coastal areas from Maine to Virginia. My northeastern birds. During the breeding season and migrate further south in the winter. Salt sparrows, so I imagine they like to stay on the coast. Researchers with a group of universities have been tracking them for several years and reported this week that eight out of every ten of the birds has disappeared 
in the past 15 years. The birds still number in the tens of thousands, but University of Maine Professor Brian Olson, studying the sparrows, said their population has dropped about 9% annually since 1998. Olson said coastal construction of structures such as roads and railways has restricted the flow of the tides to salt marshes and interfered with the birds habitat. Sea level rise has also hurt the sparrows. We're watching a species in an incredible rapid decline. The salt marsh sparrow is sensitive to changes in the tidal marsh. There are about 53,000 of the sparrows in the United States. The only country in which they live. Oh, all the more they should be protected. Olson said their decline is the most severe in New England, where they have disappeared at a more extreme rate than any other tidal marsh bird. Salt marsh sparrows are not afforded special protections or protective status in the United States. Really? But the International Union for conservation of nature's red list of threatened species lists the sparrow as vulnerable. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has asked Olson and the other researchers studying the sparrow to put together information about the bird so it can make a determination about whether it should be considered for protection. They better do it quick. The other researchers are the Universities of Connecticut, New Hampshire, Delaware, and the State University of New York College yeah. of yeah. Environmental Science and Forestry. Yeah, that's, that's right. There's a little piece of New Hampshire that's on the, uh, the Atlantic coast. Not much, but a little section, yeah. A little section. Their work on the Sparrow is part of a project called the Salt Marsh Habitat and Avian Research Program. Protect the Salt Marsh Sparrow. That's its name? That's correct. You know, you know what's strange? I learn something new all the time. You know my crested geckos? They, um, they were thought to be extinct until the 1990s when they were rediscovered. I, I had no idea. They were actually <coughs> considered extinct uh, lizards and uh, that's something fascinating anyway thank you for joining us for progressive discussions have an enjoyable safe Memorial Day weekend it is the unofficial uh, beginning of summer and the opening of all the beaches uh, and, and have, a, have, a, have a stuffed wallet so you can put out all that dough on all those beaches. When it comes to um, New York beaches, uh, I'm assuming New York beaches and New Jersey, especially, especially the Jersey Shore, it is a big racket. I, I would never be a victim of it. Never. <clears throat> I mean, it's bad enough. you got to sit in traffic and pay for the gas and the tolls to get down there. Then you have to pay to park. You have to pay to change into your bathing suit. If you're caught changing in the in the restroom, you get a, a, a heavy fine. Uh, um, it's a real racket. You, you got to pay to get on the beach. Cover charge. You can't bring. My hot dog. You can't, bring, you can't bring snacks and beverages. You can't bring it. You got you. Get, which means you get suckered into spending money on the boardwalk for snacks and food. You pay uh, price gouged, uh, insane prices for your food, 
and drink really price gouge rates. Looks like rain on Monday. It's anyway. a complete legalized racket. Oh, rain on Monday? That's what it looks like. Good. Good. Uh, and for what? For some dusty New, New Jersey beach. It's not even a white, sandy, pristine southern beach or tropical beach. It's like, uh, it's ridiculous. You see all these assholes on the beach from the Jersey Shore, uh, uh, chicky poos with tons of makeup on, lipstick, oh. earrings, and they're in their bikinis. Mm. They're, you know, they're out there frying and they got makeup on. Give me a break. What a bunch. You know, this, see, this is what I mean by associating with intelligent people with more class, you know, uh, intellect. Yeah. It's incredible. Anyway, we'll see you next time. But, most of all, like I said before, many times, don't drive drunk. Be safe. All right? Don't Have fun. Have fun, but be safe. Just like I tell people when it comes to exercise and physical training, don't make don't make exercise and um, sports a big dick contest. You know, uh, bragging about how much weight you can lift and all this shit. As long as you do it safely and progressively, according to your right own. Need. You you only need to compete with yourself. with yourself because everyone's body, everyone's genetic makeup is different. Everyone's dick is different. Everyone's dick is different. Yeah. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production. <laughs>